Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to an Astro Chat episode. Recently while doing a client session, I had an insight about the switch from Ketu Mahadasha to Venus Mahadasha. And if you would like to jump straight to the content of that insight, I will provide a jump link below and you can just dive straight into that. It won't take very long for me to explain that concept. So this can be a very quick video for you if you like, but equally, if you're looking for some distracting content, you know, just a bit of light chit chat about astrology and things and, you know, then stick around. That's what this video is going to be. I haven't been doing pick a card videos lately and I know a lot of my pick a card audience, they might be wondering, hey, what's happening with pick a card? That's not on anymore. What's going on? I don't know myself. I'm, I'm in the dark about it as well. I'm just feeling guided not to do any pick a card for a little while and I will be guided what's next. And I was chatting about this with my friend and business coach, Jenny Johnson. I'm mentioning her because we did a recording just recently, which is going to be the next Master of Starlight episode. I'm probably going to edit that tomorrow and I'm probably going to launch it next week. So stay tuned for that. You will get to meet my business coach and she's, you know, great to talk to and I often run ideas past her. I mentioned that I'm not sure what's happening with Pick a Card. I said, I'm, I'm, it's probably not going to happen anymore. And she said, don't say that too, too quickly. She's like, you know, just, just be guided, just see what happens. So that's, I'm in that space with Pick a Card. I'm going to be guided as to what's next with Pick a Card. Not even I know, but as I know, I'll update you. I figure in the meantime, I can just do a little weekly Astro Chat episode where we catch up and, you know, talk through astrological insights that I've had during the week. And I've, I've got that one this time and I happen to be wearing pink. So I thought that would be good. Now from last time's video, we talked about prayer. We talked about art and taking your power back. And one of you asked a great question, which I wanted to answer. You said, I'm down to do this mantra, but I don't have beads. Can I just do it without the beads? And I wanted to tell you, yes, absolutely. You can do uh, any chanting or mantra without beads. And I do believe every religion and every culture around the world, they have beads too. I was with a friend of mine the other day. We had a little coffee. Um, her building is super cool. It even has a little cafe. So we had a little coffee there and I was there and she is from the Muslim faith and she told me that she's got a set of prayer beads and her spiritual guide has told her various things to chant. So we were chatting about this whole thing. Now, you definitely don't need to have any beads at all. Um, the first, the very first chant that I ever learned was a Buddhist chant. And I'll put it on the screen. It's Namyo Horenge Kyo. And there are quite a lot of people who do this, actually. I believe Tina Turner is a huge fan of this chant. She did it a lot as well. I did it a lot for a time in my life. I think it was about a year or so that I used to go hang out with that. It's a really cool Buddhist group. And I used to go there and yeah, there was a whole group of us and it was lots of fun. And we used to do this chant. And I just wanted to tell you this story quickly because it's pretty interesting. In As part of that group, I think it's some kind of international group or something like that. Um, and one of the members mentioned this story that somebody in their home was being robbed like at midnight or something. And the the man of the house, he goes down and, you know, he has to deal with this situation <clears throat> and um, he goes down and, and the, these people are there robbing him taking stuff from his house and apparently because he does this chant Kyo, he just stood there and with this sense of power and authority and conviction and truth and all the good qualities right he just projected 
this chant to these people and then I think it was a powerful sort of a deep voice he used and he just projected the chant nam myo ho renge kyo nam myo ho renge kyo nam myo ho renge kyo he just kept doing it right at these people and apparently they got really scared and they left his house they dropped everything and they left his house so you definitely don't need any beads or anything like that the other thing is if you've got a simple little chant you could do ram 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 that's just the simplest one you can do and picture yourself in white light and if ever you're in a situation where you're scared or you're you know frightened or worried or any of that you can just do that over and over again i have watched also a lot of videos by diana cooper and diana cooper has all these wonderful little things that you can do she says that you know um say for example if you're in now she's got lots of different little things you can do she says if you're in a swimming pool or a large body of water she says you can with intention touch the water and say um, may this water bless and heal everyone who's in it and things like that she's also got a little prayer that she does if she's ever walking past someone who's homeless for example she'll say something like you know i'm wishing you peace and strength that you find your own abundance she has these various little things like that that she does or if a siren goes off you know she'll call archangel michael i remember for a time i used to do that quite a bit i used to call on archangel michael uh, this was many years ago, but yeah, if, especially if I was walking through my town and I was a bit scared or I saw a fight breaking out, you know, I would call Archangel Michael to just help resolve the energy, shift things, you know, but definitely calling on the big powerhouse energies. And in Hinduism, you can, of course, call on Lord Hanuman. Uh, and it's been really interesting in the comments below a lot of you have said that you are doing the Hanuman Chalisa every day wonderful that is absolutely beautiful that's a really great thing to do people are also doing Sundarkand or reciting Sundarkand um, but yeah in every faith and in every tradition there are things that we can do there are great beings of support that we can call on and you don't need anything so I really like that question and I just wanted to take it on. Okay, let's take a look at the topic for today. Oh, and by the way, last time I forgot to include the picture of the really cool uh, guy that I mentioned whose videos are really funny. I'm going to put it up on my side. How Asian Parents Flex by Stephen He. His name's Stephen He. How could I forget his name? But I did forget and I did forget to put this little picture in the video last week. So just want to update you all. That was the link that it's, it's been sat on my desktop all week and I'm like, oh, I forgot to put it in. All right. Now the next picture I want to take you through is this one. And this is really cool. I just saw it briefly on a telegram channel that I sometimes tune into. It's one of those alternative news source type places, but this was the picture. And this made me think of the transition from Ketu Mahadasha to Venus Mahadasha. Now, if you have had your Ketu Mahadasha and you would like to comment below and let us know if this is true, I would love to hear from you because my Ketu Mahadasha is going to come towards well if if i get there you know the very end of my life and, and venus i doubt i'll be even touching that one but when i consult a lot of you who are going through this uh, one of the things i'll say especially to people who are in the ketu mahadasha is that you are growing rapidly and massively and you're growing a root system that you possibly can't see because Ketu is the body without the head. So you don't have access to your senses. And when a lot of people enter Ketu Mahadasha, they start to feel, they can start to feel lost or confused or this sense of what's going on. You're really having to adjust to this energy of Ketu 
which has no senses. You can't see, you can't hear, you can't taste, like all the senses are located in the head. You don't have a head in Keta Mahadasha. So a lot of people get quite worried in Keta Mahadasha actually. If you're not on the spiritual path and if you're not a spiritual person, those people especially sometimes think that their their life is upside down or things are very wrong or you know and, and some of them will actually go and see a psychiatrist and things like that they'll they'll go that path uh, ideally with a ketu mahadasha you are on a spiritual path and you're deepening yourself spiritually i mean that is happening anyway what is happening is what you can see here in this image an entire root system is growing you're growing massively and Venus Mahadasha is like the, the bamboo tree that shoots up. You know, we can see that in the image next to the first one. I do believe this picture here is a very good analogy for the transition of Ketu Mahadasha. You know, where it says bamboo tree in the first five years, you could say Ketu Mahadasha, you know, seven years. And then you could say the next picture, Venus Mahadasha, over the next 20 years. You know your growth will be visible you will see and Venus Mahadasha I do believe is material in nature it's supposed to be joyous and good and you know material I, I do think that it's it's one of the best Mahadashas to have if you have a Venus Mahadasha in the prime of your life I tend to think you're a very lucky person you know especially while you're young, I think Queen Elizabeth had her Venus Mahadasha now, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was very much in the prime of her life, but at, at a really good time. I think from when she was 20, I do believe. So for a young lady, that's a terrific thing to have your Venus Mahadasha placed at that time in your life. You know, and especially if, if Venus is well positioned. My goodness, how, how fortunate is that? So those of you who have experience with either of these Mahadashas, feel free to let us know in the comments below how you like this analogy, is this helpful? And if you're in Ketu Mahadasha, please don't worry because you are growing in ways that you can't see and you are going to enter a time period in your life where you'll not only see the rewards but you'll be living them, experiencing them, enjoying them you just got to hang in there, that's all. So I hope this has been a nice little distracting video. I'm just looking at the time. Yeah, it's not too long. I was intending to do something a bit short today. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for the November Outlook. That should be available soon. Uh, I have just uploaded it. I just need to type in all the little bits and launch it. It's all going on. So thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time.